Now, how many people ever reviewed the collectionary to meet before? Ah. Anybody else? Oh, there we go. Okay, so a few people know what the what the, the passage from John is about, right? Yes? Yes? Well, who wants to tell everybody what it's about? What is it about? Lazarus. Lazarus. Oh, anybody ever heard of Lazarus? Something to do with bones. Anyway. Yeah, Lazarus. Um, now I'm not going to read all of this because, um, frankly, if I did, we'd run over by about 20 minutes, as was my experience previous this morning. So, as a consequence, we're going to just talk about Lazarus for a few moments. Now, here's this guy, Lazarus, right? And he's sick! That never happens to us, does it? I mean, really. Except this guy, he's really sick. And, but, he's a friend of Jesus, or at least he's a acquainted with Jesus. And and so the idea is, well, hey, Jesus, come and visit me. I'm sick and I'm dying. I know I'm taking some poetic license here with the scripture, however. Right? Well, Jesus can't make it. And so Lazarus dies. Man. And Jesus is sad. Because he knows Lazarus is dead. He's sad, and so is everybody around him, and so on. And so Lazarus is dead for anybody? Ah, sorry, no, back here. Four days. Now imagine, this guy is dead for four days. In the scripture, it tells us that they opened, right, this tomb, and what was it that accosted them at first? The stench, the smell. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. We're talking about this in church. But it's true, right? This, okay, this guy's been dead for four days. What do you expect? They laid to rest. But what did Jesus do? He went out? Well, he didn't go immediately, and then when he arrived. Yeah. You want to know what it's going to be surprised. Yeah, what did he do when he arrived? Well, he was with them, with the bar, and ah. told them that your brother will rise again. Oh my goodness, he actually said, that, wait a minute, this guy's been dead for four days. How can he possibly rise again? Now we know that's impossible here, don't we? No, there's not a there you go. <laughs> Gee, what, what, what happened in this story? Jesus goes in, right? And says, hey, you guys stay there. I'll be just a minute. And who comes walking out? Lazarus. Alive. And well. And well, walking around. You can't tell me that all things are not possible with our God. So, let me jump back to our lesson in Ezekiel, because we have this neat, I mean, if anybody wants to come up and look, I mean, there's bones. My goodness. What's interesting is the first time I read this Ezekiel passage, I was, I was reminded of worship service. I was reminded of my early experience with worship, where people would sit in the pews year after year like dry bones and do nothing. Now that doesn't sound like anything we're familiar with. I, mean, I used to amuse myself. It was great. I, you know what a bulletin's for, right? It's paper airplanes. Well, what, I, what I used to do, again, I think I've mentioned this, right? I used to, I used to take it and 
look at the birth and death dates of all the authors of the hymns, and I figure out how old they were when they died. I mean, what else are you going to do with church service while well, you're just sitting there kind of absorbing things as they take place? Now, I know that doesn't identify this congregation. I know we're all alive and awake and jumping for joy and so on, right? I saw that during the first hymn, by the way, this morning, where we were all so excited that we were moving. Well, maybe not quite moving, but maybe smiling at least, right? I happen to think worship is fun. It's a time when we should be excited and so on. Not dry bones, but... Let's think about this. You know, when Jesus comes in, when the Lord comes into this place, when the Lord would come into those places where I was worshiping and saw all those dry bones, as soon as the Holy Spirit took charge of that place, what happened? Those dry bones came over. They dry bones started moving. My goodness. I know my dry bones sometimes have difficulty starting, but anyway. I know. It's like, especially, oh, I can't help it. I, you know, like getting up in the morning first thing, right? I, I go to roll out of bed. Doesn't work too much anymore. I actually have to throw my leg up in the air and throw it back down in order to get enough force to actually sit up. I don't know if anybody else has that. I think it's my center of gravity that's changed. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> I am a similar occasion. <laughs> Boy, I can relate. You see, you see, sometimes we just need that little extra motion to get us started, and that extra motion, by the way, is the Holy Spirit that comes and moves with us. We're not here dry bones. We're alive. We are yet alive. And we're especially alive because of the Lord God who loves each one of us. You know, Jesus was, was somewhat upset at the death of Lazarus. And he got there and he did miraculous things. Our God loves us so much that he's upset when we suffer, when we face adversity. He wants to be there with us. And yet often we are like the dry bones. We are unmoved by the Holy Spirit touching us. So my brothers and sisters, I, I suggest that, that we be looking that Holy Spirit working in us and through us and touching others in everything that we do, in every way. And when we do that, we are no longer, a minute, I'm going to attempt this. church over the years has gotten complacent. 
We have become, as a church, dry bones. We haven't had the mission to go forth and touch people. If we look at the early Wesley movement, what did they do? They went out and went into fields and, and preached. They went and had camp meetings. How many, how many people are familiar with camp meetings now? Right? Having a great, great time. Uh-huh. So if I said we're having a camp meeting next weekend, how many people would raise their hand and say, okay, I'll go. Well, I'm going to sleep in tents and have campfires. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. You see where we, but the point is, right, there used to be that excitement, that fervor, <coughs> that joy. And we as a church have fallen asleep. And so what we need to do is we can ask, we can prophesy, as Ezekiel prophesied, about those bones. About those bones coming back together, about the church being more dynamic more a force in our community and in our world. Because God knows that's not necessarily the case today. And so my brothers and sisters, here's the challenge. Let's go out as a church. Let's be energized. Let's shake up those dry bones and put them together in a dynamic way so that we can touch this whole community, that we can touch so many in this world that need that touch. That we can be awakened in the spirit as much as we've been asleep. We have two references here, one in our Old Testament and one in our New Testament that says, that is the truth. As God works amongst us and in the world. So let us take these lessons to heart and be energized in all that we're doing. And touch others. Reach out. Be a church that's alive. Because we are yet alive because of the life of Jesus Christ in this world. My brothers and sisters. Be energized. By the way, I do see some smiles and some faces, so at least I know that some people are listening to what I'm saying. Let's be that church that we can be, that excitement, that joy, that spirit moving in us as we worship each Sunday as well. Shall we pray? Loving Lord God, be we so much appreciate all you give to us. The very gift of our lives. The gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who came in to redeem those lives. The gift of the Holy Spirit that comes upon this congregation as we come together to fill us with the joy, the hope, and the peace that comes to understanding Lord. Lord, we pray that as we go forth, that we might be energized, that we might be more than mere bones, that we might go through a transformation to become truly alive in the Spirit to touch others. And we pray that as we worship together each Sunday, that we might Feel that excitement and that joy and, and that love that you have for each one of us. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. And let us all say, Amen. Amen.